Hello friends and thanks for tuning in. This is Daniel with some quick tips to help you use your iPad with a new operating system that just came out. Things we're going to go over today are going to be the settings icon, which is one of the most commonly unused ones, unfortunately, but one of the more important ones. So we're going to start today off with, firstly, where do I find applications that I've downloaded? One of the things that can get confusing, especially if you have a lot of applications on your iPad, is finding them. You might scroll through page upon page and you still can't locate it. One of my easiest things I always like to do is if you take your finger and you start at the middle of the screen and you just swipe down, you'll notice it'll bring up a search. Now grant settings is already on my screen, but I'm going to type the word settings. Let's say I had 400 apps and I could not find it. Notice as the second I begin typing, it automatically brings up things that are close to the word settings. So I'm going to hit applications, settings there, which is about five spaces down. Now, one of the things that I want to start off with in this tutorial is especially with the newer operating systems, iOS 10 and iOS 11, is where is my iCloud? I remember when I first upgraded, that was one of my first questions. iCloud used to have its own side icon, like these in particular. However, they've actually moved it to where the very, very top, it even says Apple ID iCloud iTunes, but that's easily looked over. So if you notice, if I touch here, it actually takes me to my old iCloud, iCloud side icon. Now, just so you know, we're going to go over iCloud a little bit more intensive later, but I just wanted to let everyone know exactly where it was because it was quite frustrating when I first started it. The next one we're going to go to is airplane mode. Now, airplane mode, what airplane mode means is exactly that. When you get on airplane, they always tell you to turn your device off. You also have the option of using airplane mode itself. Airplane mode itself, it does two things. It cuts off all access to the outside world of the iPad, but you can still use the iPad even though it's not connected to the outside world, if you had apps already downloaded that don't require internet or books or pre-downloaded movies to the hard drive of the iPad. But when you put on airplane mode, which is different than do not disturb, which we will go over later, is it shuts it completely off. Meaning that if you were to get a text message, you will not get that text message until you turn airplane mode off. Wi-Fi is the next thing we're going to go over. Wi-Fi is very commonly known now. Wi-Fi is a wireless connection to the internet. Now if you notice, when I click on Wi-Fi here, there's several different networks that come up. Now, a long time ago, a lot of people thought it was rude to ask companies what their Wi-Fi password was. That is completely incorrect nowadays. That faux pas is completely gone. When you go to the place, the company is going to assume that you're going to want to hop on their Wi-Fi, and they will usually have a guest network uh, for that exact purpose. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi get very, very confused all the time because people think Wi-Fi, and they're like, well, what's the difference between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? Bluetooth is mostly used for mice, keyboards, and speakers, and headphones. Especially now headphones with the iPhone 7 not having an earphone jack. Bluetooth is also wireless, but has a much smaller uh, pipeline, you would say, to push information back and forth. So it's mostly used for menial tasks such as keyboards, mice, and headphones. The next thing we're going to go over is notifications. Notifications is exactly what it is. How does each app notify me something is happening? So for example, I'm going to click on FaceTime. So if you notice, A, you have to allow it to tell you, uh, allow notifications means exactly that. You're allowing it to put something on your screen that an action has happened in that app. What you can change many things about this. Now if you notice on the bottom, you can have where it's persistent, what will, will constantly tell you over and over that you have missed a call or FaceTime or something with action with that app. Or temporary, what will just go on, it'll fall down on the screen like the animation shows and then immediately go back up. Now, sounds are cool because you can change it to whatever sound you want. In fact, I want to select sound by touching sound and I'm going to change it to circuit. So now anytime I get a FaceTime call, that's going to sound. Now, badge, I, badge app icon is a little bit different. I'm going to hit the home button here to minimize my screen. And if you notice, I purposely left uh, the settings button on the bottom right hand side there with a one. That's exactly what that means. If I were to turn that off it, on this app, it would not show that one. Just like with email, it gives you a notification when there is something new going on. Show on lock screen sounds exactly like it sounds. On the lock screen itself, if I were to uh, click the off button on here and click it back on, it would show it on the screen before you unlock. So if you have a lot of personal information that may be coming through on text messages, uh, FaceTime, etc., 
you can always turn this off and it will not display until you unlock your iPad with your passcode. <clears throat> Same with showing history. Showing history just means it will show the whole history log of how many times someone has text called, FaceTime, etc. Show as banners is exactly what we talked about before. If you notice the little animated icon directly below it, it will show as a banner on the screen even if you are using an app that doesn't have anything to do with it. So if you were typing an email and got a FaceTime call, it would show a small banner, so and so is FaceTime calling you. Now, the very next one is Control Center, and we are actually going to go into that in a separate lesson because I want to talk about Do Not Disturb. Do Not Disturb is completely different than airplane mode, and a lot of people get these confused. And the reason why I want to go over them is for that reason. Airplane mode, as we spoke of before, turns off Wi-Fi, cellular, any way to get external sources from the iPad itself. Do Not Disturb does not turn anything off. It just eliminates all notifications. So, for example, if you turn on Do Not Disturb, you can schedule it for 7 in the morning to, or 9 at night to 7 in the morning, whatever you prefer. And what it does is if someone tries to text or call, it will not vibrate, it will not ring, and it will not ding, it will not make any notice that you got this notification. This is important for people and work, workaholics that want to get their sleep as, as peacefully as possible. So Do Not Disturb is, is, is a very good feature. Just always remember to make sure that you turn it on and off. I'm going to show you very briefly how to turn it on and off rapidly. So I'm going to hit the home button, go back to my home screen here, and I'm going to sw swipe up. And what that means is swiping up, all I'm doing is going from the white or black rim of the iPad where the screen does not continue, and I'm taking my finger and I'm swiping up. Now this screen is considerably different on iOS 11, and it's a lot more efficient in my opinion, and I really like it. This screen is actually a little bit different even on an iPhone, and we will go over that in later lessons. Now if you notice on the top right hand side, I have the airplane mode we talked about, I have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. But a little bit farther down on the right hand side, you will notice what looks like a crescent moon. I want to highlight it right here. That's turning Do Not Disturb on. A lot of people have come in before and like, I don't get my texts, I don't get my calls, and what's going on? It's because they forgot to swipe up and touch this to turn it off. If I touch this and turn it on, you will, not re you will not see them. You will still receive them, but you will get no notification of any phone calls, texts, or anything on the device that has Do Not Disturb on. What I'm going to do now is hit the Home button to return to the home screen, and we'll go back briefly into the Settings button again. Now remember, the easiest way to find the Settings button is if you are on the home screen, swipe down, type in any application you want. Like for example, let's do Photos, P-H-O-T. So as you can see, it brings up several things that have the word photo. Photos is right there. But this is a really handy tip and I really like to do it a lot. The next lesson we're going to be going over control panel, um, which was where I swiped up from the black or white part of your screen. And because this has a whole lot of very quick and easy and fun things that you can do quickly, especially switching in between apps, which we'll also go over in the, uh, several other lessons. So. As of now, we have, we are going to the settings button. We've gone over all the way to do not disturb. And the next lesson, we're going to be going over the general and display wallpaper and Siri. I appreciate you guys tuning in and you guys have a wonderful day.